All right, peeps, it's time to learn how to actually make a flight plan and fly. So I want you to go to skyvector.com and please do this with me. We're going to click flight plan. We're going to take off from Kappa, that's Centennial, and we're going to land at KBJC. And when I do that, it, it zooms in. Here's Centennial Airport. You can see the airport code is KAPA. And here's Broomfield. And so it tells me that if I take off on this runway and I fly at a bearing of 321, I'm going to go right to that. But that's not really super helpful because I need to line up for an approach. So let's take a look at what that approach lineup is going to be. So if I click on that green dot and then I hover over Rocky Mountain, I can click the ILS and it will load up this approach plate here. So if I look at this, it says I need to be at a heading of 295. So I want you to open up your engineering notebook and I want you to make a note here. You're going to write down five things. First thing, number one, is we need to be flying on the 295 radial as we approach this runway. Is the 295 radial. Really, really important. That's the heading that you're flying. Uh, we need to use this localizer. 111. That's the second thing is tune your localizer, your ILS, to 111.7. That's going to give you your vertical um, glide slope and your left to right localizer so you know that you're lined up on this runway. Uh, that's number two. Number three, we need to tune ourselves to the 115.4 um, Jeffco VOR so that we know how far away we are. You can see this is a VOR with a DME. So we are only going to be using this for the DME. We're not going to be navigating towards this because we're actually want to fly off to the right hand side so we can have a good approach. So we're not going to fly right to here. Otherwise, we just miss the runway. So that's why we can't fly right to this VOR. So more on that in a second. That's your third thing. Your fourth thing is we look down here. This is a side view. It says you need to be at an altitude of 7,000 feet. So I need you to write that down altitude 7,000 feet as you approach this 295 vector. That is going to be your altitude, so you'll need to maintain that. Really, you should maintain 7,000 feet the entire flight. So keep that in mind. That is your goal, 7,000 feet. Your, four, your fifth thing, your last thing, is you'll see that we need to hit the 7,000 feet once we get to 4.3 plus 4 nautical miles. So at about 8 or 9 nautical miles, and you're going to see why I say 9 in a second, um, you should be at 7,000 feet on the 295 radial. So we can actually set our flight plan to tell us where to go if we type in this B-A-A-W-L, this outer marker. So I'm going to go B-A-A-W-L. Let me close up this plate. And I want you to do this also, B-A-A-W-L, and hit Enter. And you can see that it notices. So I just clicked once to deselect that. It knows where that outer marker is. That is right here. So my goal is, is to fly at this bearing until I get to nine nautical miles away. And then I start looking at my ILS and I follow my ILS. And really at nine nautical miles, I should be rolling left to that 295 bearing. So there's one little trick here. It's not exactly 335. There is a slight magnetic deviation. If you note this vortex here, this arrow pointing off here is not pointing straight up and down. It's actually a seven degree deflection because magnetic north um, changes that. So we're actually going to fly at a bearing of 342. So I'm going to just say 340. So go ahead and write that down right now. I want you to fly at a bearing of 342 or 340 until nine nautical miles. And then you need to roll to a bearing of 295, and that's going to take you right in line. So if you've made those notes on your flight plan, on your piece of paper, in your notebook, you should be in good shape. So now let's go to our flight sim, and you can go back and forth from a flight sim to a video by just hitting the Windows key, and it will open up this tab down here, and then you can go back to any things that you have open. So I'm going to go to my, um, my X-Plane. I'm going to click New Flight. Make sure Cessna is selected, and I'm going to search for KAPA. Double-click this, and I need to make sure that I'm choosing this 35R starting point. That's going to take me off almost straight north, which is going to make my um, flight plan way easier. So I'm going to select this 35R, click Confirm, click Start. And now that I'm in my cockpit, I need to double check my navigation equipment. So I'm going to right click on the mouse and drag down so I can look at my nav. And I want to tune this VOR so that it is at 115.4. So mine, since I've done it on this computer, is already set. So if you click this push CV, you can see it's selecting COM or VLOC. I want it down here. And I want one of them, and this one at the bottom is the one that you're adjusting. I want that one to be set 
to 111.7. So you can click on these dials until you get to 111.7. That's my ILS. I will use my ILS when I get nine nautical miles away. Then click this V switch and because you can tune two stations to make it easier for you. And we want to tune this one again to 115.4. That was my VOR for KBJC for Broomfield. We want that one to be active because that tells you a distance. Do not worry about this radio. We are not flying to that VOR. So let me go back to the map and I'll show you. Again, we are not flying straight here. If we do, we'll miss that runway. We are actually flying on this heading, which is a heading of 342, until we get to nine nautical miles. So I am only watching this 25. And I want it set so that I have 115.4, 111.7, and I can close this. Now I need to tune this to 295. And I'm doing that just for reference. ILS doesn't actually use that. So let's just kind of, so I can use it as a reference to adjust my heading here. It does make it a little easier on the brain. Um, as soon as I take off, I need to get to 7,000 feet and I need my heading to be at 342. Do not use this needle until you get to nine nautical miles. At nine nautical miles, we're going to flip this so that we're using the 111.7 and then these should both become active right now i think the glide slope it's telling me something but the left to right localizer doesn't work until you get close enough so i'm going to take off at 7,000 feet and then i'm going to show you what to do next all right i am now paused i did my best to get it to 7,000 feet here at a and i tried to keep my bearing exactly the same as that runway which is a 350. i remember i want to be at a bearing of 342. So again, right here, three, four, two. And as soon as I'm nine nautical miles away, I should roll left to 295. So let me unpause it. I'm going to roll left. And there we go, three, four, zero. So I didn't have to do much. I want to keep my altitude at 7,000 feet. So make sure that this is set to zero and play around with it. So you're just going to be watching this. Keep this vertical speed to zero. Keep your heading at three, four, two. And then when you're distance is nine nautical miles, then you can flip it over by clicking this button over to the 111.7. So if you want to speed up this simulator, if I'm going to pause it, if you click the I key, you can set this ground speed to 6x. But be careful because every motion, let me unpause it, every motion you make is going to be amplified. So if you are not a very smooth flyer, you probably don't want to do that. But you can see the distance really clicks down. So I've flown it for a few more nautical miles. You can see I'm still clicking down. I'm still on 6x speed. I am maintaining my heading of 342. And um, as soon as I get to 9 nautical miles, I got to flip this. And I need to roll my aircraft. So I'm heading at 295. So I'm going to let you do that. And I'm just going to uh, just kind of show you. Roll this thing. This is a terrible roll. Uh, but you roll it to about 295. And then you start reading these needles. And of course, I did not do it at the right time because I'm not at um, nine nautical miles. So I messed that up. So let me pause it. So make sure you do it correctly at nine nautical miles. You should be going back to your normal speed here. Do not do it at six X because you'll fly right by it and roll yourself to two nine five and then start following these needles. At that point, you really should be able to see some runways out in front of you. Um, and get kind of an idea. I can actually see it right there, but I'm hitting it at the wrong angle. So good luck to you. Call me over if you have any questions or need some help.